Hi, my name is Lyndon. I'm a technical support agent here at Luminex. I want to go over how to do a process on the Luminex 200 instrument known as a stringent clean. The stringent clean process consists of four stages that can solve various issues on the Luminex 200. Stage 1. Check the external fluidics of the Luminex 200 consisting of the sheath and waste fluid bottles or containers, fluid lines, and connectors. Stage 2. Check the probe, consisting of removing, cleaning, and adjusting the height of the probe. Stage 3. Clean the internal fluidics, consisting of several steps to flush, clean, and clear the internal lines and flow cell. Stage 4. Run a calibration and verification using the Luminex 200 Cal and Ver kits to ensure the Luminex 200 is reading and reporting properly. This is a comprehensive process that can fix many issues on the Luminex 200, such as calibration and control failures, probe clogs, low events, instrument clogs, failing fluidics, varied fluid levels in wells after sampling, fluid leaks from the valve on the syringe pump, and poor sample acquisition. We help people every day using this process. If you have any of these issues, here's how to do a stringent clean. Stage 1. Check the external fluidics. The first step is to check the external fluidics components, including sheath and waste fluid containers, lines, and connections. Sheath fluid is important because it serves as the delivery medium to transport samples through the instrument. If there's something wrong with the fluidics on the Luminex 200 instrument, it can cause errors. There are different configurations for getting sheath fluid into the instrument and getting waste fluid out of the instrument. The configuration each customer uses is determined by their specific needs. One configuration uses the Luminex Sheath Delivery System, or SD, in conjunction with the disposable 20-liter sheath fluid containers. Another configuration replaces the Luminex SD with reusable 1-liter sheath and waste fluid bottles. In either configuration, 20x sheath fluid concentrate can be diluted to 20 liters and used instead. The waste can go into an empty disposable 20 liter sheath fluid container, the reusable 1 liter bottles, or even a direct line to a medical liquid waste disposal system. To prevent back pressure to the instrument, all the waste containers must be vented. Luminex SD keeps a constant flow of sheath fluid going to the instrument. It has built-in sensors to monitor the fluid level of its internal 1 liter reservoir and pulls sheath fluid from a 20 liter container as needed to maintain that level. If the sheath fluid level becomes low and the reservoir cannot fill to that expected level, it will alert you that the sheath fluid needs to be replaced. No matter which configuration you have, look for the following things. Inspect the sheath fluid and waste containers. Look to see if the sheath fluid is low, the waste fluid is full, the filter is lying on the bottom of the 20 liter sheath fluid container, there are any leaks, any of the lines have kinks or are pinched, or if any of the connectors to the lines are not connected properly. The connectors are color coded to make it easy for you to connect them properly. Blue is for sheath fluid going into the instrument. Green is for the air line that creates pressure. Orange is for the waste fluid. Finally, white is for sheath fluid going into the Luminex SD. If the sheath fluid is low and a disposable 20 liter sheath fluid container is being used, take the end of the sheath intake line out of the empty container and place it into the new container of sheath fluid. Ensure the filter at the end of the intake line is lying on the bottom of the container. Next, press the Prime button on the front of the Luminex SD. The empty container can now be used as a waste fluid container. Make sure you mark the container so it doesn't get confused as sheath fluid when it is full. Also, be sure to keep the sheath fluid container below the Luminex 200 and SD. Lifting it above the instrument will cause back pressure inside the SD and force fluid to drain back through the airlines and into the instrument. If the waste fluid container is full, 
Remove the waste fluid line from the full container and place it in an empty sheath fluid container. Discard of the full container by appropriate means. The waste fluid is biological waste. Please use proper precautions by always wearing gloves, protective eyewear, and a lab coat. And make sure the instrument is not running while emptying or changing the waste container or lift the container above the instrument. Both of these actions can cause pressure issues or push waste back into the instrument. If the reusable one liter bottle is being used, release pressure by loosening the lid. Disconnect the sheath and air lines from the Luminex 200. Remove the lid. Then, refill the sheath fluid container with diluted concentrate or fluid from a 20 liter container. Replace the lid. Reconnect the sheath and air lines. Make sure the lid is tight enough to maintain pressure inside the bottle. Should the sheath fluid ever run dry from a bottle, as indicated here in the software, refill the sheath fluid bottle, reconnect it to the instrument. In the software, run the prime command at least twice or until all of the air is out of the system. If the waste fluid bottle is full, disconnect the waste container from the Luminex 200 instrument. Once disconnected, unscrew the waste container lid. Discard the waste from the waste bottle by appropriate means. After the bottle is empty, replace the cap. Then reconnect the waste container to the Luminex 200 instrument. When you connect the fluid lines, listen for the connector to click. Some leaks may be fixed by making sure the connectors are seated properly. If that isn't the source of the leak, you should call our technical support line and let us help you determine the source. Now that the sheath fluid levels are good and the waste container is ready, we can move on to the next step of the stringent clean process. Stage 2. Check the probe. The second step is to clean the sample probe and set the proper height. If there is anything clogging the probe, or if the probe height is not correct, it can affect sample acquisition. Here are the steps to make sure the sample probe is functioning properly. For safety reasons, you must always check to be sure the instrument is not performing any operations before removing the sample probe. Remove the plastic shield that covers the sample probe area. Remove the light housing. Then. Unscrew the cam inert fitting on top of the sample arm. Loosen the thumb screw on the front of the probe arm until the probe drops. Next, grasp the probe and push it up through the top of the sample arm. Grab the top of the probe and lift it out of the instrument. Be careful not to damage the sample probe. It should slide out easily. If you feel resistance when trying to remove the sample probe, contact Luminex Technical Support. Once the probe has been removed from the instrument, it needs to be cleaned by either sonication or flushing. To ensure a sterile environment for the probe, a good tip is to place the probe in an upright cylinder filled with sterile deionized water and then place the cylinder into the sonicating bath. To sonicate the sample probe, place the narrow end of the probe in a sonicating bath for two to three minutes. Keep the larger end out of the fluid. Seeing water dribble out of the wider end of the probe is a good indication the sonication is working. To flush the probe, Fill a syringe with distilled water and push the water through the narrow end of the probe and out the larger end. Once the probe is clean, place it back into the sample arm and replace the chem inert fitting. Note that the sample line can get crimped when replacing the light housing, so push the line aside. Next, adjust the probe height for the type of plate being used. Having the correct height for the probe is crucial for proper sample acquisition. 
If the probe is set too high, you might get bubbles, but if it is too low, you may not get enough sample. So how do you know what is the correct height for the sample probe? We have some tools to help you. These are our height adjustment disks and spheres. There are larger 5.08 mm diameter alignment disks, smaller 3.35 mm alignment disks, and 2.4 mm alignment spheres. This chart shows you what to use for each type of plate. For a standard plate with flat bottom wells, stack two of the larger alignment disks together and place them into the selected well. For a filter bottom plate, stack three of the larger alignment disks together and place them into the well. For a half volume plate with flat bottomed wells, use two of the smaller alignment disks. For a round bottom or U bottom plate, use two of the smaller alignment disks. And for a plate with conical wells, place one alignment sphere into the selected well. Now that you know what to use, here's how to adjust the height. Place the appropriate alignment tool in the A1 well in the upper left corner of the plate. Any well can be used for the height adjustment, as long as you remember to designate the new well in the software, which you will see later. Using the Exponent 3.1 software, eject the plate holder by clicking Eject. Place the 96 well microtiter plate on the Luminex XYP instrument plate holder with position A1 in the top left corner. This is also a good time to verify the microtiter plate is not warped or warped plate can throw off the alignment. Click Retract. On the Maintenance tab, open the Probe and Heater section. Ensure that the plate type is set to 96 well plate. On the plate image, verify that the pin is on the correct well location. Loosen the front thumb screw on the probe holder one third to one half turn. Pull it upward until it touches the top of the adjustment slide. Tighten the thumb screw. In the software, click the Move Probe Down button. After the probe has finished lowering, loosen the front thumb screw. Gently push the probe down until it rests on the top of the alignment disks or sphere. Tighten the thumb screw. Click the Move Probe Up button. It is easy to put too much pressure on the probe when setting the height. A quick way to make sure this didn't happen is to move the probe up and down a few times and watch to see if the platform moves when the probe touches. It shouldn't move. Eject the plate holder. Remove the microtiter plate and retrieve the height adjustment tools and set them aside for future use. Replace the light housing. Replace the plastic shield. Stage 3. Clean the internal fluidics. Now that we know the sample probe is clean and at the correct height, we can move on to the third step, sanitizing and washing all the lines inside the instrument. If there is anything in the fluidics lines or flow cell of the instrument from bubbles to crystallization of sheath fluid or debris, going through the following steps should flush them out of the system. From the Exponent 3.1 software, eject the plate holder. Fill the reservoir with 0.1N sodium hydroxide. Be careful, sodium hydroxide is dangerous even at low concentrations. Make sure you have on your protective gear including gloves, safety goggles, and a lab coat. Retract the plate holder. Click on the Maintenance tab. In the Routine section, verify the reservoir is selected on the plate layout. Click on Sanitize twice. Click OK. Click Run. Click OK. 
Because of its caustic nature, sodium hydroxide will break down organic matter, helping to clean out any debris in the fluidics lines. Next, we do the same thing with diluted bleach to sanitize the lines. Eject the plate holder. Empty out the remaining sodium hydroxide from the reservoir. Replace the reservoir and fill it with a 10 to 20% bleach solution. Retract the plate holder. In the routine section, click on Sanitize twice. Click OK. Verify the reservoir is selected on the plate layout. Click Run. Click OK. Eject the plate holder. Empty out the remaining bleach from the reservoir. Replace the reservoir and fill it with distilled water. Place one of the 96 wheel plates that the probe is adjusted to on the plate holder. Fill any two of the wells completely with alcohol. Retract the plate holder. In the Routine section, click on the Back Flush command, then the Drain command, the Back Flush command again, the Drain command, the Back Flush command, then the Drain command one more time. On the plate layout, click on one of the wells filled with alcohol, then click the Alcohol Flush command. Click on the other well filled with alcohol and click on the alcohol flush command again. After that, click on the off plate reservoir, then the wash command five times. Finally, click run. Click OK. The order of these routines creates a scrubbing effect inside of the instrument. Any remaining residue will be flushed from the instrument. With the fluidics lines cleaned, there is one last step to the stringent clean process. Stage 4. Run a calibration and verification. Finally, we need to calibrate the system. This will ensure the instrument is classifying and reading results correctly. Grab your Luminex 200 CalVer kit and let's get started. Click on the Maintenance tab in the software, then click the Auto Maintenance tab. Select the Calibration Verification Radio button. In the Calibration Kit and Performance Verification Kit drop-down boxes, select the kit lot numbers being used. The kit lot numbers can be found on the kit boxes. Make sure these numbers match or your calibration will be off. If the kit isn't already imported, there is a CD that comes inside the kit box with all of the information for your kit. Insert the CD and click the Import Kit button. Select the kit you want to import on the CD and click Open. After the kit is imported, select that kit from the appropriate drop-down box. Click Eject. Replace the 96 well plate with the auto maintenance plate on the plate holder. Place the empty strip wells into the first two slots of the plate. Add the performance verification and calibration reagents to the plate according to the diagram on screen. Vortex each reagent vial for 30 seconds. You can get away with vortexing for 10 seconds, but no quicker than that. Invert the vial and place five drops into the designated wells.
Repeat for each reagent. Fill the DIH2O D7 well three quarters full with deionized water. Click Retract. Click Run. The calibration and verification routine takes about 10 to 15 minutes to complete. While the calibration and verification is running, monitor the events per second being displayed as the routine runs. It should peak above 250 events. The number will fluctuate above and below 250 while running. You just need to verify that you are getting an average of 250 events per second. That was the last step in the stringent clean. If the calibration and verification completes without any errors, your Luminex 200 instrument is working properly. The instrument is ready to start working on your samples and assays. If the stringent clean didn't fix your issue, there is something more complex going on with the instrument and you should call us here at Technical Support for assistance. You can also check out the resources we have online at www.luminexcorp.com. I'm Lyndon and I want to personally thank you for choosing Luminex.